Hello everyone! Today's video is going to be about power. Just as velocity is the change in position over time, power is the change in work over time, or our rate of doing work. So our equation for power is P is equal to delta E, or W if you prefer to think about it like that, over T, or as I just said, work over time. But another way to think about this is because P is equal to delta E over T, and because our work can be equal to force times change in distance, we can also say that our power is equal to F times delta X over T, or that it's equal to F times delta x over t, and as we know, delta x over t is actually equal to our velocity, so we can say that power is equal to f times average velocity. Let's test your understanding with a couple of conceptual problems. In our first situation, both of these people are pushing a box up the same hill. Person A is walking the box up, but person B is running it up. Whose power is greater in this situation? Let's draw an LOL diagram in order to s represent our situation. So, we have our L, O, and L. And we're going to define this system as the Earth box system. We need to label our axes. We have kinetic energy, potential energy of gravity, potential energy elastic, and potential energy internal. Let me extend that. We have kinetic energy, potential energy of gravity, potential energy elastic, and potential energy internal. So in this situation, in the beginning, regardless of whether it's situation A or situation B, we have no kinetic energy and no potential energy because the box is at the bottom of the mountain, not yet being pushed, or hill, whichever you want, way you want to look at it. So we have no kinetic energy and no potential energy. We have no friction in this problem, which I should have specified earlier, so we're going to have no internal potential energy, and there's nothing that could create an elastic kind of oscillation, so we have no elastic potential energy. At the end of the problem, let's imagine that the box is at the top of the hill, at rest. This means that we have gained our potential energy in between the box and the earth because there's now a distance between them. However, we still have no kinetic energy because the box is not moving. So, sorry, we have we have no kinetic energy, we have some potential energy of gravity, which is equal to m times g times h joules. We have no elastic potential energy, and we have no internal potential energy. And because the heights of these hills are the same, that means we're going to have the same change in potential energy in either situation A or situation B. So we know that our change in energy, our change in energy of situation A is equal to the change in energy of situation B. And we know that this change in MGH joules is caused by the force normal of us, or whoever it is, pushing on the box. Let's get back to the problem at hand. We know that power is equal to change in energy over time. And we just said that each of these situations has the change, same change in energy. So now we need to see which one has a greater or lesser time. If person A is walking the box up and person B is running the box up the hill, person A is going to take a longer time to do the same action that person B is doing, which means that their time is going to be greater than that of person B, which means 
power is going to be less for person A than person B. So, to answer the question of whose power is greater, the situation in which the power being exerted on the box is greater is situation B. In our second situation, two trucks of identical mass are accelerating from rest until they reach a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. Truck A is accelerating at a rate of 500 meters per second squared, whereas truck B is accelerating at a rate of 1,000 meters per second, and that should be squared. Who's, which truck's power is greater? This is very much the same as our previous problem. Because we have both of these trucks accelerating to reach the same kinetic energy of one half mv squared, we know that their change in energy is the same. And so all we need to look at is the time it takes for each of them to achieve that velocity. Because the acceleration of the first truck is half that of the second truck, we know that it's going to take a lot longer for the first truck to reach 2,000 meters per second than the second truck, and it's actually going to take, in fact, double the amount of time. So because it takes longer for truck A to reach that same velocity than truck B, its power is going to be less than that of truck B. So in the, situ in the question of which one's power is greater, we can say that truck B's power is greater. Let's do an example problem. If a 2,000 kilogram elevator can move 80 meters upward in 200 seconds, what is the power exerted in raising it? We know that our power, let's color code that, power is equal to our change in energy over time. So let's use an LOL diagram to represent our change in energy. In the beginning, let's say our elevator is at zero, it's at ground level. So we have kinetic energy, potential energy, gravity, potential energy internal, and potential energy um, elastic. So if it is at resting at ground level, it has no potential energy of gravity, and it has no kinetic energy. We can also say for the purposes of this problem that it has no elastic potential energy because the rope or cable that's containing it isn't going to spring back on it, and it has no friction, so we're going to say it has no internal potential energy. And obviously I should have designed my system first, but our system is the elevator earth system. and. At the end of it being raised 80 meters, we're going to have potential energy of gravity, kinetic energy, potential energy internal, potential energy elastic. It's not going to be moving anymore, so we have no kinetic energy. We already said it didn't have any friction, so it has no internal potential energy, and uh, again, the cable isn't stretching or shrinking, so we have no elastic potential energy. And so this change in potential energy from the beginning to the end of our situation is going to be equal to our work. And because our potential energy of gravity is equal to mgh joules, our work in this situation is mgh joules from the force tension holding up the elevator. So we know that our change in energy is mgh joules and that's going to be divided by our time. So if our mass is 2,000 kilograms, our gravitational field let's say is 10 for the purposes of this problem, and our height is 80 meters, and our time is 200 seconds, we can just substitute all of this in and get that our power is equal to 2,000 times 10 times 80, all divided by 200. And that is going to come out to 8,000 joules per second, or the unit of power we most commonly use is actually watts. Let's do another example problem. What is the power of the graph below? As you can see by the labeling of this graph, this is a force 
versus distance graph. And we know that power is equal to our change in energy or work over time. But it is also another way to write work is our force times distance over time. And as you can see here by the labeling of our graph, we have our force and our distance. So what we can do is find the area underneath this curve. And that is actually equal to the force multiplied by the distance, which would give us the top portion of our power equation. So you could approximate the value of the area under the curve by taking rectangles that are decently small in width and length in width, sorry, and splitting the area up into these smaller rectangles in order to calculate about what the area under this curve is. And it's not going to be exact, but it'll be close enough for our purposes. Once we get the sum of the areas of all of these rectangles, we will know what our f times delta x is approximately. And this problem actually gives us the time that we are going to need in order to find the power. So once we have our f times delta x, all we have to do is divide that by four seconds and we get our power. Let's just say that this area under the curve is, let's say, 50 joules. So our power would be equal to 50 joules divided by four seconds, which is 12.5 joules per second or 12.5 watts. I ran out of time to do this problem, but this is a good problem to challenge yourself with and to review the concepts you've learned in this video. I hope you found this video to be informative and have a good day.